getting this leather right was one of the bigger challenges we had. And it was just a huge trial and error process. It took us 11 years. We take a lot of pride in playing our part in making the leather, which turns into an NBA basketball. My current role is the president. I'm in charge of running the business. Grading leather, we're looking at how clear the grain is, the natural thickness, and then the size of the skin. And then we have to remove the hair and preserve them. Then they go into tanning drums where they're preserved and tanned. That's the chrome tanning process that we use. So we take that leather and we texture it with a big embossing press. Then we can go about the finishing process. We do our finishing by building the finish up in a series of lighter coats. It's a combination of color, durability, and feel. The feel, though, is very important. It's a performance instrument, so it has to feel right. Then the leather will be dried. At the end of that, after a series of checks and color matches, that leather will be graded and trimmed, and at that point, it's ready to be packaged and shipped. It's a function of the skill and knowledge of the guys that are doing it. We take a lot of pride in being able to turn on the TV and see something that we had a hand in making. We verify that we have 100% good product for the NBA. I'm in charge of making sure the quality is right on the NBA game ball. We first take the balls and we inflate them on some inflation stations. And then at that point, we have another operator that checks it manually with a gauge. We take it from that station to a measuring station where we measure the circumference. 29 and 5 eighths, 29 and 3 quarter inch. And then from there, we're making sure that a brand new ball meets the minimum rebound of 52 inches. They go from that station to where we wake the windings. Waking the windings means that we rebound the ball at about 20 miles per hour. We do that 50 times. That way the ball is a little bit more consistent on the rebound. The NBA loves this product. I just feel very proud to be on this team. There's so many aspects of logistics surrounding the game for the game to be great. I started in 1986 as a ball boy. Lucky enough, in 1999, I got the head equipment job. We never have to worry about the consistency that Spalding provides. I always want to make sure the guys have everything they need to go out there, showcase their skills, and help their team be successful. After a certain amount of practice, you can just tell from the texture of the ball that it started to be broken in completely. And texture begins to change. It kind of changes from orange to almost brown. It's ready to move over to the arena for the game. We select three of them, take them to the referee's room, and they actually pick the one that goes for the game. Having Spalding deliver such a consistent product and the fact that you never have to worry about the basketball really adds a component to the game that no one even really thinks about. I take a lot of pride in my job. No matter what ball we use, we know Spalding's going to deliver the best product and going to be game ready for those big games. Getting this leather right was one of the bigger challenges we had. And it was just a huge trial and error process. It took us 11 years. We take a lot of pride in playing our part in making the leather, which turns